Internet hackers claim that confidential emails from scientists show that climate change data has been fiddled. They allege scientists have been cooking the books to support the view that the global warming is caused by human activity rather than a naturally occurring phenomenon. Well, we're now joined by British MP Peter Lilly, a former senior cabinet minister under Prime Ministers Margaret Thatcher and John Major, who's live with us in London to discuss the so-called climate gate affair. Mr Lilly, thanks very much indeed for joining us here on RT. Now, if these allegations about a conspiracy are true, why do you think such manipulation could be happening and who could actually be benefiting from it? Well, I think it's an example not so much of a conscious conspiracy but of an unconscious conspiracy by a group of scientists who, from reading the emails, are so loyal to each other that they're determined to agree with each other even more than they're determined to agree with the facts. So if the facts no longer agree with their theory, they try and change the facts rather than trying to change their theory. And the people who benefit from it are obviously the scientists themselves because they feel morally superior. They're leading a crusade apparently to save the world and they believe in it profoundly even when the facts refute them. Uh, and they also get large grants from government for carrying on this sort of research and they wouldn't get it if they produced the opposite sort of conclusions. So uh, these sort of emails uh, being uncovered, if, if they are genuine, th this could be a, a big blow to the environmentalist movement, could it not? It could, and the um, scientists concerned have had to admit that the emails are true. There may be conceivably have been one or two filtered in which are not, but there's been no evidence of that or no suggestion of that so far. It'll be a blow to their credibility, but so great is the momentum, so large is the amount of money invested in this theory that it will take even more than this exposure to derail it, I fear. Uh, what are your thoughts then uh, about this? Do you think that um, alternative energy companies, for example, uh, they could be profiting from this so-called fear of uh, global uh, warming uh, and that it's not related to human activity? Well, what are your thoughts about this? That you, do you think that, uh, that there is perhaps a conspiracy here? Well, I'm certain from having read a lot of the uh, emails and documents that they were adjusting the data uh, manipulating the data, concealing the doubts they had internally uh, and continuing to express certainty externally. There's even an example of uh, the computer codes that they've adjusted to cut off the evidence of the recent period of global cooling. Uh, for the last decade the world hasn't heated up as their theories suggest it should have done. Indeed it's cooled slightly. So they cut that out of their computers and they cut it out of the uh, diagrams and so on that they produce uh, and likewise they've uh, altered the data in the past or they've selected data from the past which has wiped out the evidence of the so-called medieval warming period when the world was probably warmer than it is now because after all if it was warmer then without us all burning lots of hydrocarbons it suggests that hydrocarbons aren't the only things that uh, cause the temperature and the climate to change. But people are taking this extremely seriously. We're now seeing that there's a major climate change conference in Copenhagen uh, hoping to forge a new treaty to replace the current Kyoto Protocol. There must surely be some threat of uh, global warming, otherwise these conventions wouldn't be happening. So, so what do you think about this future meeting? Well, I think that I personally, I'm a physicist by uh, training long ago, except that uh, doubling the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will uh, produce a modest warming in the climate, but nothing like the alarmist fears which these scientists have been trying to generate or that lie behind the Copenhagen conference. I think the one thing one can predict with great certainty is that the Copenhagen conference will not achieve a legally binding agreement. They'll simply agree to meet again and tens of thousands of uh, delegates will meet again somewhere else in a few months' time, burning lots of carbon in their jet aeroplanes and their air-conditioned rooms, and hypocritically telling us, the rest of us, that we shouldn't ever travel by aeroplane or burn any uh, petrol or gas. But just finally, the fact is, I'm sitting here in Moscow, there should be snow here at this time of year, and uh, even amateur meteorologists or experts will think there is a case, there is global warming occurring at the moment. Uh, so, do you really think that this money is being wasted, or do you think it could be put to better use? Oh, the climate changes and is very variable. The very day the British Parliament passed the Climate Change Act, which is the most expensive piece of legislation we've ever passed, committing us to cut our emissions of CO2 by 80% at the cost of some £400 billion, uh, it 
snowed in London for the first time in October in uh, 74 years. So it's been exceptionally cold sometimes, exceptionally warm a month or two later, uh, but overall there's been no upward trend for the last decade. There was for the previous two and a half decades, and before that it was actually cooling again from the war through till 1975. So uh, they're trying to make an awful lot of a relatively short period of rapid warming and ignoring the cooling that occurred before it and the cooling that's occurred more recently. Very interesting to hear what you have to say. Peter Lilly, thanks very much indeed. British MP for the Conservative Party and uh, former government minister, live in London. We appreciate your time here on RT. Thank you.